Hey guys, it's your boy Chili here, and today we are starting a new series. In this series, we are going to create a fun little game engine. We're going to do it from the ground up. I made a few videos in a playlist called C++ Infrastructure. You might have noticed it. And the plan was to create isolated arcs for different systems like an IOC container, logging system, eventing, etc. Uh, but that would mean very synthetic examples of use. I uh, think like component A and component B. Uh, it would be much more interesting to see these utilities in action in a realistic system. You know, put them to the test in a practical context and have them working together. Uh, so that is uh, that's basically why we're going to make a game engine. We're going to make a, it's going to be a simple one high performance 2D game engine. I'm gonna use optimized hardware sprite patching and I think it is gonna be pretty cool. You know, 2D games are you know, what I play the most and they're what I'm mostly interested in working on. And also making a 2D game engine, uh, there's gonna be less uh, stuff to get sidetracked on so I can focus more on the infrastructure which is you know kind of what I wanna target here. Uh, but I know not everyone is interested in 2D games and luckily most of the ideas that we cover here uh the infrastructure they're going to apply to 3d games and you know even non-game applications so there's gonna there's gonna be something for everyone you know bring the whole family is what i'm trying to say but yeah that's that's it for the uh for the whole spiel let's get down to brass tacks as they say so we're going to start with a blank solution uh, and it says create new project, but that's not what we're going to do. We're not going to have any project. We're just going to have a completely blank solution to start off with here. And uh, we're going to call this one. I got I got a name picked out. We're going to call it Chill. That's the name of the solution. Simple, on brand. That's what we're going with. All right. Now, the first thing we got to do here, we got to get ourselves in some source control. If you're not using source control, you got to rethink your life decisions. So... My best way of getting the source control working in Visual Studio here is I'm going to do a git init from here. You know, Visual Studio has a way of adding source control from the GUI, but it wants you to like connect to an online thing, and I'm not ready to do that yet. I just want to make a local one. So I init, then it's not yet connected. You have to actually close it, and then we open it up again, and now Visual Studio is connected to the Git. And the reason why I want Visual Studio connected, I don't use it for my Git, I use Git Kraken generally. But I want it for one specific reason. I want to add the Visual Studio Git ignore file. Because that one has all the stuff, it has all the presets that I like. So we're not going to get any garbage into our history. Now, let's finish up the initialization. We're going to add everything to be added. And we're going to go Git commit m initial there you go so that should just be two files right our solution file and the git ignore and uh, now we are off to the races i could open this up in git kraken whenever i want to continue but uh, we'll leave it like that for now uh first thing we need to do is we need to add a project to this solution you know a solution is just it's an empty shell right it's just a container for projects projects are the, the heart and soul of the whole thing. So what do we want? Normally we'd go with like an empty project. Maybe we'd make it into like a Win32 or something like that. But what we want to do in this thing here, what we're making, is we're going to separate out most of our logic into a static library. And then the, the projects that build the executable, they will link to that library. And uh, it seems like extra work for no benefit, but there is actually pretty good benefit to separating out your code like this. And we will get to it. Uh, now, I don't want to, you know, really fine, fine grain separation of all the different parts of the application into different libraries. I'm just going to throw all the logic into a single library, call it core. And uh, I think that'll probably be good enough. It's good enough that we're just putting our logic into a static library instead of into the executable project itself. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge and we'll learn why that's important uh, in the future. Right now, let's just work on, you know, 
seeing how the static library can be used then to build an executable. Now, the first thing that I want to do here is I want to get rid of, because we always, we get two platforms, right? When you start up, you get 64-bit and 80, uh, x86, which is 32-bit. And I want to remove the 32-bit because we don't need it and we don't want it. So I can remove it from here and it still remains in here. I don't really understand everything about how this is all set up, but if I remove it from these two places, it's gone. Until I add a new project and then it's back, I'm not sure if there's a way to get rid of it completely, but if you know, uh, you know, give me your ideas. I'm always open to any comments or improvements on anything I show in this in these videos. So we get rid of that, you know, detritus there. Another important piece of setup that I want to get done here is the way we view our solution. So Visual Studio has two ways of viewing. They have these uh, filters, which are like virtual folders. They actually have nothing to do with the file system, right? If I go to here, you see there's no folder structure. All the files are just chilling out in a single directory here. Uh, the structure is all just a virtual structure imposed by the Visual Studio uh, project file. Uh, but I don't like this view and I like to actually structure my files in the file system these days, not using the, the, uh, the filters. So what I do, and I don't know why, like here it says show all files, but that's not enabled for this one. Uh, I wonder if I just go like this and then I turn it on again. Yeah, it doesn't work for the project, but if I click here, all right, so now I have the file view. This is what I actually want. And I think in a future video, we're going to create a subfolder, put all our source code in there to separate it from the other stuff. But for right now, we'll just leave it like this. What we want to do here, what my goal is for this video, is just to get some code in a static library, link that to an executable, have it build and run. So uh, we'll leave this PCH garbage here, even though it's not, uh, we're going to get rid of it eventually. Uh, but we're going to add a new item. I'm going to add a header to match our source file. We'll just call it core. And um, we're just going to, you know, forward declare a test function. And then in core.cpp, get rid of that. We'll go int test and return 420. So there's our test code. Now, if we build this, I think it'll build fine, but you know, there's nothing to run because this is a library. It's not an executable. We actually have to have a separate solution as an executable that links to this library, and then we can use the code. I know it seems like extra steps, but believe me, there will be a payoff. I'll just, it'll, you'll just have to wait for a future video to see the payoff. So we'll add a new project here. We'll make an empty project. I like to make an empty project for my... Uh, for my console stuff and we'll call it the uh, console sandbox create that here all right so we're gonna need a main in here uh, we'll call main dot cpp so we're gonna do int main here and uh, we want to call our test well i guess first things first we can include io stream std cout and we're going to call our test function and uh, now the problem is of course we don't have the definition of that function so we want to include uh, core dot h but here's the problem core is not in this directory here let me see here let's just change this one as well to files yeah so it's in a different directory um so we can't really include it like this what do we do well we gotta make it available so we can go to the visual studio directories and we want to add include and we are going Here's what I like to do. Let me show you what I like to do. I like to add, let me just see if I can find the macro for it here. Instead of hard coding in directories, it's much better to use these macros. That way when someone else clones your project, it's not gonna look in a weird place that doesn't exist, right? 
So we're going to use the solution directory as an include path. Did I, did I add that in there? It looks like it did not get added. Let me just apply that. That was for all configurations, so that should be good. And then what that lets me do, now I can type in core slash core.h. Uh, and the reason why I didn't point the solution directory directly to core is because you might have multiple projects that you want to include stuff from. And it's just nice to be able to namespace them like this. Because what if both projects had a file named core.h and you added both of them to the path? It would be um, ambiguous as to which one you wanted. Here you can specify the full path and so there is no ambiguity in uh, header file names. So anyways, we include this. And everybody seems happy, so we should be able to build and run, right? No. So there's one little one little step left. Uh, we can see we get a linker error. So it was able to compile, but it was not able to actually find the uh, the implementation of this function because it's in it's not in this project. It's in a different project. So we need to make our console exe link in the library file, the .lib file generated from this project, and we could manually add it to the, uh, the list of libraries and add the path. But a much cleaner way is if we just add a reference. So we can add a reference to the core library and it will automatically link in that dependency. So now if we build, ah, so this is not the startup. We gotta set this as this startup project. So now when we click the start button, we get 420 and Bob is your uncle. We have linked all the things we have our core logic in one project, building a static library that is linked into this project, which builds our target executable. And that's where I'm going to cut it off today. You know, there's plenty more setup stuff to come. I'm going to cover a lot of uh, really handy Visual Studio features that you've never seen me use before. Uh, but I want to keep these videos relatively short, so we're going to cut it off here, and uh, next video will uh, continue on. Last thing I want to say, since it's the first video in the series, is I think it'd be cool to make this a kind of like a community participation thing, using GitHub to collaborate. So we can use like pull requests and issues, and motivated people can be submitting, you know, bug fixes, enhancements, optimizations, quality of life improvements, new features, or, you know, just completing some chores that need to be done in order to uh, proceed with the videos. Now, there is one little caveat here, and that is uh, before, you know, you, you move on with work and you, you code up something big, uh, it would be really good if you just ran your idea by me first, you know, just we kind of communicate a little bit. I don't want people spending 20 hours on a feature and then, you know, they, they submit a pull request. I look at it and I'm like, ah, eh, it's not a very good fit. That's going to lead to, you know, some awkward situations. Uh, so what I'm going to do here in this, uh, the description, I'm posting a link to my Discord. And that's going to be the main place to communicate and to plan any collaboration. And then GitHub can be used for like the logistics, and the actual transfer of code. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be, it'll be fun if we, uh, if we get community participation, we can build something together, but if not, it's fine. It's, you know, I'm, I'm going to be building the thing either way and making the videos and it's open. If anyone uh, has the inkling to contribute. Thanks for watching. Um, please click the like button. If you like the video, it's going to help out the uh, the algorithm quite a bit, especially the first video in the series. And uh, I will see you again. With whatever I decide to name this video series. Ta-ta.